The new Schwinn aluminum comp, the new boundary, and the new TAF all have one feature that gains a lot of attention, and that's the tapered head tube. This video isn't a debate on the merits of a taper, only to prove that these new Schwinns do, in fact, have a legit taper. Because today, I'm installing a tapered fork on this new 2020 aluminum comp. To do that, I'm going to need a few things. First, a new lower headset. I'm using the Fun Descend headset because, well, it's super affordable. There are countless brands available. The key is to make sure it's the proper size. And for all the new Schwinns, the Aluminum Comp, the Boundary, the TAF, and even the new Axum, the proper headset size ZS5640. I'm also going to need some tools like this press fit headset remover. Now, I've seen people use a screwdriver, even a wooden dowel once, but I use this. I'll put a link to it down in the description. I'll also need a hex wrench set and a hammer, and I'm going to be using a rubber mallet too, but I don't have that pictured here. And a press for installing the new headset cup. Now, before you go rushing off to add this to a cart, link down in the description, you may want to watch the rest of this video. I'll also need some grease, and a fork with a tapered steerer, and a tool for setting the crown race on the fork. Now, that's optional with the fun headset. And crown race tools can be expensive, or they can be super cheap. Like this one I made out of PVC pipe from Home Depot. One piece of two foot pipe section, a coupler, and a cap, and that cap is even optional. I call this particular aluminum comp my rattle can, because... Now, I'll show what causes this in a minute, but for now, let's get going. I'll begin by removing the front wheel, which is easy because this has a quick release. Then I can get to the brake caliper. I want to remove it from the factory fork. There are only two bolts, and for this, I'll use a hex wrench. And I usually drop one or two of these spacers. Here's the proper orientation, one on each side of the caliper mount. With the caliper off, I can move up to the handlebars and stem. There are only three bolts here. Two on the stem, and the third is on the top. It's for the stem cap. Note that I'm holding on to the fork while I do this, because with the top cap removed, it'll drop free. And since there are no cables or anything else attached, it just slides right out. Which also reveals the source of the rattle can, because when I received this bike, the lower headset bearing was damaged, it got crunched during shipping. And somewhere along the route, three of the four missing bearings made their way into the frame tubes. I'm also going to remove the loose parts from the upper headset, because the removal tool for the lower cup is going to need to be pushed up and through the top. It's pretty simple, it pulls up through the lower cup and then expands out and clicks in place. And then a quick tap with the hammer and it knocks the lower cup right out. Super easy. And this next step isn't required when converting to a tapered fork, but while I'm doing this, I'm going to install a matching upper headset. And I'm going to knock that out with the same tool I used for the bottom. And here's a view of the bare head tube. A view from the top and from below where we can see that large tapered opening. This fun lower headset has three pieces, the cup that'll press into the frame, the bearing, and the crown race. Comparing the ZS5640 to the factory cup, we can see the height difference, and that's what accommodates the steerer's taper internally into the head tube. Because a real tapered setup is internal, and that's what this new lower headset is going to do for us. And getting this installed, I'm going to clean and grease the area where I'm going to be setting the cup, and I'll also be greasing the cup itself. And now to install it, and okay, this tool. Now, there's a proper tool specifically for this purpose, but it's expensive, so I bought this cheap one, which is essentially a stick of all thread with some spacers. And for this wide tapered opening, I had to do some adapting, and I'm not a patient person when it comes to workarounds. And it's important to get the cup even as it presses in, and after an hour of trying, I just couldn't get it. So I decided to take a break and give the upper headset a try, and using the same press, and it went right in. The only problem I had was I kept blocking the camera. So I figured I had it, and armed with my new false confidence, I went back at that lower cup, and two hours of swearing and resetting and camera blocking, I really need to clip that string, I just gave up. I ended up paying the local bike shop $15, and it took him longer to set up the proper tool than it did to actually press the cup in, which only took about 10 seconds. So thanks, Spinning Spoke. And I left there not only with a properly pressed head cup, but also with two other discoveries. One, that a kickstand comes in handy on a bike without a front end. And two, and this was a shock to me, but apparently exists, let me present to you the world's first vegan spider. You do you, Mr. Spider. Or Ms. Spider or trans spider, whatever makes you happy. And here it is, the tapered head tube on the new Schwinn aluminum comp ready for a tapered fork. 
And here's the new tapered fork next to the old straight steerer model that I just removed, and you can easily see the difference. And one note on the forks, I had to cut the steerer down on this new fork, and I misjudged the length, so for this video it's going to be on the long side, but I'll change that later. And there's also the need to install a new star nut into a new fork, and that tool I used to knock out the old cups, it has a star nut setter built into its cap. But I cheated and had the local bike shop install it while I was having them cut down the fork. Now to the crown race, and the one that comes with this fun headset, it can be installed by hand, because it expands and that allows it to easily slip in place. But some are fixed and require a tool, and that's where I'll be using my homemade tool as an example. Note that I lube the fork's taper where the race is going to seat, and with the tool in place, I happy Gilmore it. I tap it in. And here are the results, a perfectly seated crown race. And to get this new fork installed, first I'll need to get the other new headset components in place. And if you've taken apart your factory upper and can't remember what arrangement the parts go in, I'll show the proper order at the end of this video. And I don't think I've already mentioned this, but the new Fun Descend Upper headset it comes with a star nut. And I don't know how well you can see this, but some text on the cap. The higher the mountain, the greater the fun. Nope, just the greater fun. Almost. Some people collect coins. I'm poor, so I collect stem spacers, and I'll need an extra one or two for the new tall steerer. And now I'm going to get the new fork in place, paying attention to the cables first to make sure the correct ones are on the correct sides. And the steer with the bearing in place down on the crown race, it slides into the head tube and up through the upper headset. And with all the stem spacers in place, I top the stack with the handlebar stem combo. I'll tighten the stem cap screw first. That'll hold the fork in place and I tighten it enough to be secure but still allow the bars to move freely. Then I give another check to my cables to make sure they're in the proper place and not crossed. And now I'll tighten down my stem bolts, both of them, and the fork is installed. Super easy. But I'm not quite done. First I need to get the brake caliper installed, and first I want to make sure that it's cable secured to the fork. And then I need to make a decision. Some people are inside cable routers and some outside. Which do you choose? I'm going to succumb to peer pressure and go inside. Looking at the old fork, we can see the bolt openings are sideways compared to those on the new fork, and that's because it used an adapter. But we don't need that for the new fork, because the caliper will bolt directly on. I like to leave this a little loose until I get the wheel installed so I can adjust it, but I have a video that talks about that, so I'll get straight to installing the front wheel, which again is easy thanks to the quick release. And the last step is to replace what I call the loser clips. And I call these loser clips because they look good, but they just don't hold well. And they end up popping off, and I often lose them. And that's why you see zip ties holding the cables and lines on all my project bikes. And here we are, a tapered head tube with a tapered fork. An SR Suntour XCR with a manual lockout and 100 millimeters of travel. Now, someone's going to ask, why do all this and still use a coil fork? Well, two reasons. It was only $69, and I spent that before I'd even verified that this would all work, and also, this is a good affordable step up for my Upgrade As I Go projects, and that's officially kicking off for this bike, Project Comp V2. This shed about a pound of weight off the bike, and we'll look at any ride improvements in an upcoming video. New fork, new headset, the greater fun. Two ends, so we know it's serious fun. Questions answered. Are these legit tapered head tubes? Yes, and that goes for the new aluminum comp, the boundary, and the TAF, and the new Schwinn Axum. Parts required? A ZS5640 lower headset. And those headsets is cheap as under $25. A link down in the description, along with one for the two new tools. Now, I really like the headset cup removal tool. That cheap press, though, I'm not a fan. It's definitely not on my favorites list. Your mileage may vary, but from my perspective, for the same cost that I spent on the tool, the local bike shop used the proper tool, and really, for the average rider, how often does someone press in a lower headset cup? Thanks for watching, and if you're new to Kev Central, I hope you hit that subscribe button and that everyone has the notification bell active. And I also want to mention there's my Patreon if you want even more content. As little as $2 a month gets you a sticker, and there's also a monthly patron giveaway. Have a great day, and everyone stay safe.